Lunch break. How you doing? That's right. We're, we're gonna start soon. Love lunch break. And if you guys have seen it on Uncle Twitch, I know you can't see it on Instagram. It is episode 100. But we'll get to that in a second. Why is it new? Gino by Chris A. Hey guys, you are watching lunch break. The show that brings you the many foods you can make during your break at lunch. Hey guys, don't forget to go and visit us on IMDb. Type lunch break, one word, into the search. Rate us by giving us a rating from 1 to 10, like, comment and share with everyone. We greatly appreciate the support and the love you give to our show. Checking the, the, the feed. Am I, am I, I think this is so James come up. Am I glitchy, James? I'm trying to see if I'm glitchy on, on the screen or this is my computer. Sorry about that, folks. We're gonna start in a second. Why is it? What? Hey guys, don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Alright, hello everybody! <laughs> Welcome to another edition of Lunch Break. And if you're watching this show, it's a program that brings you the many foods you can make during your break at lunch, at home, in a dorm, or anywhere else, basically, because, you know, right now we're in quarantine edition, so um, it's gonna be home stuff for the moment. Um, and I'm gonna set you guys all down over here. Watching on Twitch and Instagram and Facebook. Hopefully you guys have seen me properly because I don't, I don't know why it's glitchy now and acting all crazy on Facebook. But I'm tuning in right now and you're watching. You are watching the 100th episode of Lunch Break. Yeah, we made it that far, people. 100. Holy crap. We've, met, we've done so many episodes already. I don't know what. That's just so crazy. But yes, thank you all of you for making this happen and getting us here to 100. Um, and of course, if you guys are questioning yourself and looking at me and being like, wait, wait a second, what's, what's going on? Why am I wearing uh, the apron? 
Cause cooking today. Today is not my show. <laughs> well, at least I'm not. But the person who's gonna be doing the 100th episode is the wife. She is the actual chef for today. No, you're kidding. There you go. So she is gonna be hosting on episode 100. I know she, she's wearing my my jacket and stuff, but. Um, so yeah, so I am the sous chef for today, legit, so I'm not cooking, she is, and while I'm her do her spiel for 100th oh episode, I'm gonna go check to make sure we're streaming. Oh my goodness gracious, well first of all, hi you guys, today as Chris said, welcome to the 100th, I repeat, 100, episode of Lunch Break, um, Forgive me what I look like. This is not my size, by the way. If you would have met me about four and a half, five years ago, I probably would have this out just a little bit better. However, this is Chris's jacket. So, be the chef, I guess, for today. Yeah, you are. I am. So, um, first of all, thank you <laughs> guys so much for having um, me. This was actually, I, I, I wasn't sure if I was going to do this or not. And the reason why I did not want to do this is because. Like, this is just all him and, like, what he does. And this is his baby and whatever else. So, um, Chris was like, no, I think the best way to start the 100th episode would be you to host it. So, I'm like, you really to cook on your show? I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, I, I cook for, yeah, for Chris anyway and my daughter. But um, I had to think about what I wanted to do and, and what we're that I genuinely love to do that I think is like one of the most easiest things I think to make and, and we are making and we're <laughs> <laughs> so um just a like pre-note to what we're gonna do today is a keto or a low carb version of what you're normally used to eating that you probably have eaten sometime in your lifetime say what it is so say that. <laughs> no I'm gonna there's a reason if you let me host this then take a back seat Stand here. Okay, so at one point of your life, no matter or if you, especially if you live in New York, you probably had an egg roll, right? You had an egg roll before, right? Yeah. We all love egg rolls, right? That crispy, crunchy, deep fried, artery clogging thing if you would say if you eat too much of it. Um, comes in different versions. Um, you have the traditional egg roll that everybody loves to eat because we all drench in duck sauce. That's my personal favorite. Yeah. Then you have the shrimp, you have a beef egg roll, and then you also have spring rolls, which are not egg rolls, okay? Spring rolls are not egg rolls, so there is a recipe that I have made in the past, and my daughter absolutely, absolutely adore it. Um, it is called an egg roll in a bowl. So we're going to be doing, guys, a low-carb version of an egg roll. Now, a great option to do if you want to incorporate it with something else, be some fried um, shell that you guys are normally used to with regular egg rolls, which by the way, you can use this recipe to actually stuff actual egg roll wraps if you choose. I just decided to do this because I am obviously on a low carb diet. I've been on a diet for over four and a half years now, give or take. Yeah. And, um, to me, it's very filling. I absolutely love it. Uh, loves it. My daughter loves it, and I'm gonna make it for you guys today. So it's called an egg roll in a bowl. Oh, do you want to read what the egg roll in the bowl or egg rolls? Um, well, sure. I'll something help. is. I heard something. Oh, oh, that's Twitch. Is that Twitch? Yes. Yeah, no, probably. Oh no, no, it's probably. No, no, there's no Instagram. Right, so, so here's the knowledge drop. Okay, so anyway. You wanna read it? No, we can do it together. Like you read one and then I read one. Okay. <laughs> it's my show for today, so I'm I'm saying how you I want you to do it. Alright. Alright, so basically egg roll in a bowl. Uh egg what well, the I don't know. Yeah, really connection issues now. Mm -hmm. Um so egg rolls are a variety of deep fried appetizers served in Chinese restaurants. Uh, an egg roll is cylindrical with shredded cabbage, chopped pork, uh, and other fish inside a thick, thickly <laughs> wrapped wheat flour skin, which is fried. <laughs> 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 
I, I was reading that I had to stop myself for a second, so, so. It's usually served at restaurants, right? Yeah. So the origins of the dish are unclear and remain really disputed at this point. There's so many different people that will say, well, we own it, we own it, or we came from here, or it came from there. Not necessarily the case. Um, Instagram is going berserk right now. Um, egg rolls are closely related to distinct from spring rolls. That's why I said egg rolls and spring rolls are really different, which are served in the mainland of China and were first in the early 20th century in the U.S. So we just very recently, for 20th century, began to see egg rolls. Prior to that, we didn't know that egg rolls existed. Um, an early reference to egg rolls appeared in the recipe pamphlet published in the United States, but the dish does not resemble the modern egg roll. Um, in 1917, the recipe, uh, recipe described a meat and vegetable filling wrapped in an egg omelet, hence the back egg roll, pan fried and served spices. That's the so, way I get it. No, so I had to stop you on there because you shouldn't have said that. Egg roll. Well, only because the last part. Doesn't matter. I said it. In the two disputed origins of the dish, it is unclear on how egg appeared in the name since the predominant flavor. American egg roll is cabbage and not egg. Right, but in 1970, it says that it wrapped in an egg omelet. Okay, I digress. Okay. Uh, egg rolls do not typically contain egg in the filling, and wheat flour wrapper may contain egg. So. Right, so if you are allergic to eggs, if you are allergic to dairy, or if you're allergic to wheat, you have what they call celiac disease. Celiac people cannot eat anything with gluten in it then you can omit the egg roll or the eggs, okay? Um, so that is the whole spiel about egg rolls and where they originated from. And of course, you guys know we in the U.S. our recipes that we get from around the world and we adapt it to what we are accustomed here in the mainland of the United States. So today, for you, da 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 in a bowl so no frying you never mentioned yeah. so we're not going to be using the wraps now like i said you could buy the wraps if you choose but we're trying to do this as low carb as possible because i want you guys to simple and easy this recipe legitimately is to make so what are you going to need for your egg roll bowl or egg roll keto egg roll what you're going to need is one pound of ground turkey or whatever meat or meat substitute you decide to use Keep in mind when you're using shrimp, you have to be careful because shrimp you have to cook it very well because it is a fish. Okay, but for the recipe that we're doing... I understand that, okay. I just, you can substitute it. Okay. Okay, you can use oil, you're gonna, you're gonna have two tablespoons, oh sorry, Wait. two teaspoons. Before you go into that, let people know what they can substitute with. I did, but you were not paying no, attention. No, because you didn't read what's on there. When, this is not gonna go well. <laughs> not gonna go well. This is not gonna go well at all. Anyway. So one pound of ground turkey, you can substitute it with chicken, beef, shrimp, or meat substitute, which is what I said, would be the vegan crumbles, which you can get in the supermarket. If you go to your local supermarket, they have uh, the vegan crumbles. We're going to need two teaspoons of oil, okay? We're going to need one bag of a 16 uh, coleslaw mix. You're also going to need four garlic cloves, minced. You're going to need two tablespoons of ground ginger, um, a little bit spicy there, right? Two tablespoons of low sodium soy sauce. The reason why I say low sodium is because Chris um, and I cook with the least amount of salt as possible. You're also going to need three large eggs. You're going to need a quarter cup of green onions, one tablespoon of sesame oil. Extremely important about the sesame oil. That is the key things in this recipe that you'll get that whole egg roll taste. You're going to need plain sauce. I don't even know if I said that right. Hoi, hoi, hoi sauce and sriracha for um, flavoring. Chew. So who do we have on Facebook? We don't have anybody on Facebook. Oh, all right. So with that being said, we're going to go through the ingredients list with Chris in the shot this time. Well, no, we're just going to start. We'll go through that and so people can get time to the paper to do this so. This isn't gonna work. So let's just start the recipe so people can this see it. This isn't gonna work. Alright, 
So the first thing you want to do is, if you do not have one, no worries guys, I just happen to have one myself, you're going to need a, a wok. So my little sushi over here. You want to get yourself a wok. This is a wok, okay? Walk and roll. This is a wok. So use a wok which is much easier to do stir fry and stuff that you're doing when it comes to stir fry uh, you can also use a regular frying pan completely optional of using a, a wok I just happen to have one the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure obviously your pot is clean and heat your wok over medium heat okay so we're gonna turn it on to medium heat let that heat up and the reason why you want the pan to heat you want to be able to get the oil and everything to heat up with the meat as well because when you have a cold pan, it just doesn't cook right. It takes much longer, right? So we're going to let it up. It's going to take mm, not even too long to heat up because we have this really... All right? And also, if you don't have a wok at home, you can actually use a... One of the other... I'm paying attention because I said that already. Well, I don't know. I was over there. I didn't know you said that. I said you can use a frying pan and you oh, choose. Okay. See what I'm saying? You can, you can also, if you're really like tasty with it, you can even cook it on a skillet. Like that flat skillet. Like, like the hibachi it. type of thing if you want to just really get really funky with it. Um, so you want to heat up your wok on uh, medium and high heat. Okay, in the wok, we are going to be placing the one teaspoon of oil, the regular oil, not the oil. Okay, the sesame oil will be done later, so you want to do one teaspoon of oil. All right, so we're going to place it in our wok. You're going to pour it in the middle like so. All right. All right, and what you want to do is, this is what I usually do to even the heat, uh, the heat distribution and the oil evenly, is I kind of Swerve it around like so, right? Make sure the bottom of the wok is completely coated to the best of your ability. Alrighty, so we'll put that there. Now what you're going to end up adding is you're going to end up adding your meat or your meat to or whatever um, substitute, oh, this is substitute, I'm ready. Whether it be the turkey, the chicken, the beef, whatever you choose in the hot skillet. Add that in there, crumbling it as you place it in the pan. Now, as guys, remember, wash your hands beforehand while I'm heating up. Alrighty. So, the reason why you want to crumble up the meat before you place it in the pan is more evenly. You don't have to fight with the um, additive. I won't say the word meat because then he's going to start giggling. Um, I was, about to, I was about to do the typical Hispanic thing. What's the typical Hispanic thing when Hispanics cook? No, I don't, I don't do that. So I'm gonna place that there, just because it's just a comfortability thing. All right. So what you want to do is you want to take the meat that you're using and you want to crumb up as much as possible before you place it in the pan because you want to make sure that it's evenly as possible, and you get all meat that you place in there to just basically get even heat distribution. What I like to do is I like to crumble it up in the package before I place it in the skillet. And you're going to notice that you can hear that and that's the sound that we like here on lunch break, the the sizzle. The sizzle. So, this is what we're going to do. Here we go. Get a sizzle, guys. We're placing crumbled meat into the wok as so. Now, this is a little frozen still, so my hands, forgive me, are like hurting right now. All right, want to make sure that's all crumbled up in there as such. All right, if you guys are just checking in, lunch break episode 100 where we are making keto egg roll ball. Hey, Kathy. Hey, uh, Sophia. Hey, so we're gonna get our little handy dandy little here, um, and we're gonna end up crushing or chopping the meat inside of the pan so that way we make sure all evenly, okay? So you're gonna crush that up. And while I'm doing that, Chris is actually cutting up the um, the green onions or what we call scallions, depending on 
what you decide to call it. I call it scallions, he calls it green onions, okay? Crushing up the meat like so, right? Pretty simple, right? And as that's cooking, you want to make sure it continues to stir it as much as possible simply because it will stick to the bottom. Alright? So we're going to let it cook for just a minute and constantly, you know, checking on it to make sure that it evenly. Right? How you doing over there? Good? Yes, sir. Alright, so how does it feel to um, be the sous chef and not the chef? Oh, it seems like uh, work. <laughs> seems like work. Yes, in this household, we share the duties of cooking, Chris and I. Chris is not the only one who cooks, contrary to much belief that people think, oh, Chris is the only one who cooks. Okay, on Friday. Not true. Not true. We share the duties in the house. Duties. I said duty. <laughs> so. So you want to make sure that that meat kind of cooks up. So you want to let it settle for just a little bit, just like that, right? You want to let it settle and let it cook and then chop it up again. Get to the charcoal. <laughs> Get to the charcoal. All right, this is why Hispanics keep towels on their shoulders, so they don't have to go, right? Now I'm going to mince up the uh, garlic cloves. So he's, so he's going to mince up the garlic cloves for me. Um, with amazing thing ever because it makes chopping so much easier. I recommend getting yourself a chop off. Get in the chop off. Get in the chop off. All right. So as you see, guys, the um the chopped meat or the ground turkey that I'm using right now is. Hey, Jordan. How are you? Um, it's cooking up a little bit differently than beef would. So if you were using beef or or um, not necessarily shrimp. Um, you would see a little on the bottom of the pan, but the reason why you're not is because this is turkey, and um, in this house, we usually eat more turkey than we do regular beef, simply because my stomach can't tolerate as often. Um, however, I do have, on occasion, a rare steak that Chris knows that I love, um, but beef, really don't eat too much. I we usually just eat like turkey, meatballs, and turkey meatloaf and stuff like that and even um, with uh, spaghetti sauce when I make my uh, special meat sauce um, I use turkey meat that's my personal preference right so how you guys doing so far you guys are good All right, just to recap just to remind you guys we are making a low carb keto egg roll ball now as you see the turkey has cooked just a bit more um, you've got a couple of pink pieces here and there so that the, the chopped meat is completely cooked. We do not want to eat anything uncooked because we don't want anybody to get sick, especially when it comes to chopped um, You know, you're not really meant to eat stuff like that. Well, I, would, I, I, I digress. I will not make a comment. Just saying. All right. This, by the way, is one of the best tools that I have in the kitchen that I absolutely adore because it makes chopping up that much easier. All right. So we put, just to recap, a one teaspoon of oil with the chopped meat. Now you're not, so you're not going to season your chopped meat. <laughs> Laura said food. Yeah. Season your chopped meat because the reason why is you're adding all this other stuff that you're going to add in there and you just don't want to take away from... Hello, everybody. I'm just going to say hi to everybody. There we go. I'm just going to lower that just a little bit. So once your chopped meat or once your um, meat substitute is fully cooked, now is the fun part where you want to add the coleslaw. Now, familiar with how spinach, I'm um, spinach, how um, cabbage works, it kind of shrinks. So when you open it up for the first time, it's going to be like, so it's, it's going to be really like all over the place. It's going to look like it's too much. Don't worry. It's going to be fine. You're going to add the coleslaw, ginger, your garlic, and your soy sauce. So while Chris is over the coleslaw, I'm going to go over and I'm going to grab the and the ginger. All right. So here we go. Add. <laughs> If you have a small cabbage when it comes out of a bag, ugh, it smells like poop. 
uh, the actual cabbage to the spare could be like take it to the side, chop it up, and then bring it back. Well, and then it was already done. There you go. So you can use actually. I'm glad that you mentioned that too. You can actually use regular cabbage. It just takes much longer to do because you have to shred it and the ca and the carrots as well. This is the easiest way. Recipes here on on lunch break is how easy yep. and fast. And so you need a 16 ounce bag. Right. Which is what is it? Okay, so, so 16 ounce bag, if you want to double the recipe, obviously you double everything. You don't double just one thing. Yep. So you take this and you dump it right in there. This is a one pot, okay, one pot meal. I actually would even go so far as, I know you don't like them, but Brussels sprouts because they're mini cabbage. No, it's asparagus. asparagus. I would do Brussels sprouts and I would do purple cabbage. Just oh to God. give it that extra color. Sorry, I'm not into this. So we've added the bag of coleslaw, right? And what you want to do is kind of just stir it around just a little bit because you don't want on the bottom to necessarily stick. All right, now to this, we're going to add the garlic first. Bam! <laughs> so you add your garlic in there. And then you're going to add your ginger. Now be careful when it comes with ginger because ginger is a spice and it will add some extra, a little extra heat. So if you're not um, really with the whole heat within a cook, ginger is not something that you want to take out a little bit less of it. So here we go with the ginger, the ginger, tablespoons of ginger, okay? So sprinkle it all around. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Looking that way. So, you smell everything going that way. <laughs> in between you adding your spices, you want to make sure that you, so everything becomes fully incorporated and engulfed in all the spices that you have, right? Guys, if you can smell this, this smells legitimate. It really does. All right. So, if come over here, what do you smell besides the the cabbage? Ginger. Yeah. Ginger's very strong. Um, that's why a lot of people, um... Hey, Crystal! Eat. Crystal. Hi, Wadi! Alright, so, as you see, the pot was filled almost to the top with the cabbage. And the reason why is because cabbage has a natural moisture. Similar to when you make spinach, okay? Spinach, hi! So, spinach has a natural, um... Spinach, ha and, spinach and cabbage water in them so when they're heated up they actually shrink don't expand it's not the other way around so now that we've mixed all of that right look how look how pretty that looks looks so pretty right guys I actually love this meal for reasons one because it's just so easy to make and two it's just so flavorful because you have all these different things of um, like the different spices that are in there all right, there you go. So we're gonna make sure that's completely uh, tossed up. Laurel sent you a 100% heart. Thank you. So we're gonna lower the fire just a little bit more. All right, and add the soy sauce. So we're gonna add our soy sauce. Yes, chef. Now, the way I suggest you add the soy sauce is not in the middle because the edge of the, the pan is hot. So I would suggest you go around just like such. So it can reach the bottom of whatever is cooking more evenly, as opposed to just dumping it in the middle. All right, so now the soy sauce is on the bottom, it's heating up. So now we're gonna toss that in. Yes. I just wanna eat it. <laughs> Guys, I mean, if you're on a low carb diet and you're craving Chinese food. Or egg rolls. Or egg rolls, I'm just like, this is just, when I stumbled across this a couple of years ago, I was like, wait a minute. No, egg roll, low carb. This, that's like <laughs> impossible. Like I'm thinking egg roll deep fried. No freaking way possible. Yeah. And I can even tell you that you can put it in a quesadilla. You oh, yeah. can stuff it in a taco shell. Um, you can put it in between potato bread. It's totally up to you. Or some cloud bread, which I can make really quick um, as well. So... If you want me to make, I can make that. So, do is you want to cook this for about five minutes. 
It's because what you want to do is you want to soften the cabbage and not make it this crunch. So we're going to lower that just a little bit, all right? Now once that's lowered, you want to just keep an eye on it because you want to make sure and hear that it's sticking to the bottom. The best way to do that is don't cover it completely, you're just going to cover it just a little bit where you have a little bit of a vent. Or if you have a cover, which it should, that has a vent. So you're going to place that on there and five minutes started. So while we're waiting for that to heat, let's just see who is on. Hey, it's Bruno! Bruno, Bruno said, I see working beard. <laughs> you see that, right? See, I'm trying, I'm trying. That's crazy. I'm trying to be like, I'm trying. I can't get it past this, but you know, I, 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 I'm trying. Mm -hmm. And I'm just trying a little bit, just trying to, you know, there you go. grow the beard in. You know. There you go. In the interim. In, in the interim. Yeah. <laughs> um, we'll give you an update to my dad. Uh, my dad is doing good. He's doing um, better. Yes. He's recovering. Um, he had major surgeries, uh, which will take another program to just go through. But he is doing good. So thank you guys. He is on the men's. He is on the road to recovery. Thank which, you guys yeah. for your prayer, your support, and continued support and right. prayers because he needs it to recover even more. Right. So so I just want to say I don't know if it's okay to say, but I'm anyway, um, to mention the facility. Yeah, no, you can say. Okay. We cannot be undoubtedly grateful any more than what we are, but we want to shout out to a few people, and um, that is to the amazing, dedicated, hardworking staff at Mount Sinai Hospital in Manhattan. So um, Mount Sinai main campus, as well as Mount Sinai Beth Israel, in addition to Dr. Lopez, who you guys know has been um, not featured but shown, yeah, um, one of the most amazing pulmonologists in, in attendings that I have ever been graced to have met. Um, he guided us through a lot of these um, things that are going on. Um, Tony's dad, and even my late husband, and my father. Guys on Facebook. We're good. Alright All right, guys on Facebook, so um, yeah, shout out to the amazing opportunity to um, recover. It is thing how this staff just worked tirelessly to make sure that he 100% safe. So shout out to Mount Sinai, Beth Israel, and I'm just doing that too on, on Instagram. Alright, so I don't know if you guys caught that. So. Once again, shout out to Mount Sinai, Main Campus, and Beth Israel for doing an amazing, phenomenal job with CK's dad and my father-in-law. He would not be here if it wasn't for the tireless efforts that they were doing. So, we got two more minutes on a uh, timer here for our egg roll bowl. If you guys are just checking, the keto version of the traditional fried egg roll. Now, if you guys can just see really quick, oh my god. It smells amazing. How do you guys think about me actually cooking? Like, is this something that you might want to see on a CK wouldn't know. Of course, what are you talking about? I'm not saying no to that. No, Facebook is Alright, so, it's about to come up in just a minute. Why do I consider so, that the fun part? It's because we're going to make a mess. So, before the uh, two minutes are up, Oh, actually, a minute. Um, I guess we'll wait to. Is there another break before this? No, is there another break? I don't know. You're the cook. I don't know no about this recipe. It's. I mean, you once we me once we're done with this part, it's just the fact the eggs and that's it. Like once this is done cooking. Okay. Because all right, so we'll just continue this. No, no. We'll... Okay. So you got all of your ingredients. To recap the ingredients that are in here, the one pound of ground turkey, one pound of oil, the bag of coleslaw, the four uh, garlic cloves minced, the two tablespoons of ginger, and the soy sauce. All and you cook this for about five minutes so that way the cabbage can soften. <laughs> Wait, Bruno, why are you saying scary? <laughs> it's scary that I'm cooking. I don't most people who eat my cooking are still alive. So Alright, so now we're going to turn the 
trimmer off. And I want you to see the difference in between the cabbage when it first started as opposed to now. So, as you guys can see, all right, the cabbage was about up to here in the beginning. And if you see, the cabbage has become almost translucent or almost clear. Like it kind of lost that really white or green color. So, if you notice, and by the way, he's salivating right now. He's like, can you just finish everything? Because I want to taste it. That's what she said. All right, so we'll put you guys right back up there. So now at this point, this is what you're gonna end up doing. So you're gonna press, you're gonna take your spoon and you're gonna press the cabbage mix side, okay? You're gonna do just like this. You're gonna press it to the side. All right, babe, can you come over here and just show them on Facebook what I'm doing? All right. Okay, all right. All right, so you're gonna press the cabbage to the side. Now when you press the cabbage to the side, you're gonna notice a lot of um, liquid kind of pouring out the bottom. And the reason why is because that's the cabbage as well as the meat that had the regular, um, um, what do you so that it had in the meat already. So once you press your cabbage to the side, you're gonna add the remaining one teaspoon of oil. Then you did only one teaspoon. So just no, give me- Two teaspoons right there, and then you have to add one. You have to do it in half. So just give me another teaspoon. That's all. No, you put it two. All right, so that's fine. Just give me. So now the reason why you want to add a little, um, the reason why you're going to split up the oil is because this is the little splash. All right. So you're pushing everything to the side like this. Good. All right teaspoon of oil, right? You're going to place it to the side of the mixture on top, guys, because that's going to end up soaking everything up, right? So you're going to pour your oil like so. Once you pour your oil like so, now is when you start making a mess. And what are you going to throw in there? Your eggs. What do I call these? Nugget juice. <laughs> Liquid butt nuggets. <laughs> Take your egg and you're gonna slowly pour it, okay? Slowly pour the egg into that air. And as you're pouring the egg, you wanna kind of like stir it up a little bit, right? And now you're gonna cause that like stir fry, stir fry, stir fry, stir fry um, effect to it. So you're gonna make sure that the eggs are distributed on the side where the um, cabbage and the meat is not, okay? Be very careful when it comes to cooking with eggs because no one can, no one should be eating raw eggs, okay? Salmonella, people. Salmonella is real. All right, so as you see, the eggs are starting to cook. So I suggest you stir it like so. You're basically scrambling the eggs. Some people I've showed make this before. They're like, well, why don't you just scramble the eggs prior and there? Um, you could do that if you want to. However, then requiring another pot, which we don't want to cook with. We want to do a one pot, low carb, right? So as you see, the eggs have been basically cooking and it's less cleanup. So more here, right? Stirring the eggs like so. Thank you very much. All right, get all the little butt nuggets out of there. Liquid. All right, so what you want to do is you want to make sure that you stir. You don't want runny eggs, okay? Only if, if it's like some salami and juca. <laughs> by the way, I've been Dominica, Dominican fied, if you don't realize by now. I'm a white, okay? I'm a white girl. I'm a Hispanic white girl, by the way. But a darling husband over here is Dominican, and a lot of things that they eat for breakfast made no sense to me in the beginning, but I'm like, okay, we'll try it. So now I actually like it a lot. So you want to make sure that you stir up your eggs. It's going to a little bit stick to the bottom. See, babe, how it's kind of sticking a little bit? All right? It's okay. And you want to make sure you just check a little mixture over here so far. Make sure it's not sticky. Not stick. Alright? I'm gonna make sure these eggs are fully, fully cooked. 
I like cooking with silicone utensils. With it makes sure it makes the uh, stuff doesn't stick to the sides as much. All right, so we're almost done with this for the butt nugget juice. <laughs> How you guys doing so far? You guys are good. You guys are good. How you doing? All right, so we're almost done with the eggs. Almost done with these. Alright, you want to make sure that that cabbage mixture is not every so often kind of checking on it. And the eggies are almost done. They are almost there. Almost there. Almost there. Anybody know what movie that's from? Oh. Princess. Princess and the Frog, sorry. Tiana, Princess Tiana. So now, some people like their eggs soft like this. I like to make them just a little bit more cooked when it comes to stir fry. So you'll know that they're cooked when they start to move their glossy look to it, right? So the eggies are basically done with a butt nugget juice. Okay. And now we are going to mix it in. This is when you start to mix in the eggs into the cabbage mixture, okay? And the reason why you do it this way is because you want to make sure that the eggs do not dry out. Who likes Ooh. Right? So now you're going to make sure the sides are all clean. All right. This need the, um, the green onions. It's all right. So sprinkle it on in, sir. You're going to sprinkle onions all the way around. Alright. I'm going to mix that in there. Thank you, sous chef. You're welcome, chef. Oh. So you mix that in, and the reason why you add the green onions at the end, a little bit of crunch, and that fresh taste of the fresh cut green. Right? Now the last step that you're going to do is take your sesame oil. Guys, sesame oil is very strong, so you need a lot of it. You take your sesame oil and you're gonna pour, pour in a circle. <laughs> All right, pour it in a circle. All right, was that a tablespoon? Yeah. You sure? That didn't look like a tablespoon. That looked like a teaspoon. All right. So now, if you can get me a plate or four. Stir that up, stir that up. Now I'm not so sure say quoi when it comes to serving of a, a, a platter as it I don't need that man. What's wrong with you? What is this? Oh. Is it today? Yeah, but we're doing presentation. Yeah, but no, I can do it the same way without doing that. I'm telling you. This is off camera, you got annoyed, so I'll do it. Not a problem. So you want to cut the heat off. Make sure you cut your heat off, right? Don't cut you don't need to cover it again, right? Ooh. Moisture. Can I get the red thing? Can I get the red thing, please? Yes. I want the red thing, please. Your show. I want the red thing. Alrighty. So how much you want to eat, up to you, alright? So you're going to take your plate, like so. Alright. Just asking a question. I'm asking a question. Why are you moving it? Alright, so. There you guys go. Now what you can do is to keep the moisture in, I would suggest the top back on and move it off that hot area because cook even though the surface or your range is completely cooled off, right? Now, is a little I actually do that. It's not on the recipe, but I like to do it. 
gonna end these boys. Some sesame seeds, right? Of course, usually, especially to everything. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna sesame seed. Oh, I like so. Okay. Switch this back over. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. The low carb keto egg roll. All right, let's show it for you guys at home. You guys have it. Look at all that. All the yumminess of an egg roll. No carbs. All right. Now you can garnish this with sriracha, whole soy sauce, or duck sauce. But Chris, taste it with whatever garnish or salt that he decides to use. Alright. Like so, like that. While he gets a little Soy sauce, no duck sauce or anything. So you want the chef already done. You can add duck sauce if you want. That's what it called for. And there you guys have it. Simple, low carb, one pot meal that you can for the entire family. Lunch break delicious. Reminds me almost like a um with a chain stir fry? Now, if you decide that you want to get the little egg wraps from your local Asian market, that's what you, that's what you would add into the little thingy. Okay, so there you go. Brought to you. Ingredients of the ground, which whatever you desire to make, um, or as Melissa suggested, uh, shrimp. Mm -hmm. um, you have eggs, you can get eggs, and then everything else you can do at your local store. You know, basically the sesame oils, the green onions, the soy sauce, which you probably have around in your house anyway, because it's takeout. Yep. Uh, ground ginger, you have to get. And garlic cloves, of course, you know, everyone yeah. has that. Yeah. But if you don't even have coleslaw in the house, you can cabbage and mm -hmm. do your thing that way. If you decide to, you want to put more work into it. But this is so easy to make. It's legitimately one pot. Like, you have to go and cook multiple pots for this one plate. Um, it can feed a oh, especially if you double the recipe. It's really easy to make probably anywhere. I can even see making this in a hotel room with a little, um, a little... Um, pot or whatever where it's not and it's not creating too much of um, smoke because as you guys can see it hasn't created that much at all like you know pan fried stuff that you would see in the Chinese restaurant on a normal so, day but there you guys have it. Iterate to everybody just give, grab a pen right now. Grab a pen and a paper um, and we're gonna go through the ingredients right now. Yeah. Okay so what are the ingredients? Take, take your time saying them. So you have one pound of ground turkey that we used, which you can use either chicken, beef, pork, shrimp, whatever you choose, as long as it's one pound. Be certain that if you're using shrimp, that you devein shrimp. Um, and Chris can do a little short video about that later on to show you how simple what it too thick. I, no, I just buy that with already. Well, you can just buy them pre <laughs> like I said, if you want to put in the quick stuff, yeah, quick stuff. Um, two teaspoons of regular oil. Which, comment on it, I don't know if she was about to say it. You use one part in the beginning and one part at the end. Anyway, 
you have one bag which is 16 ounces of pre-cut coleslaw mix because everything you need is in there the chopped um, cabbage the chopped up carrots no effort whatsoever you need four garlic cloves minced up okay you want two tablespoons of ground ginger you want two tablespoons of soy sauce three medium to large eggs not small because then you're not gonna have enough mixture in there which by the way you can omit or you can use totally up to you all right you're gonna need a quarter cup of green onions or scallions that I call them one tablespoon of oil and if you're thinking that the sesame oil is not gonna be enough it is because it is strong um, whole soy sauce which is optional which would be like a garnet hi Nancy and uh, sriracha, which is optional as well, which is also optional to duck sauce. You serve this on a and boom, there you go. You can actually take this with you to work and heat it up in a quickly. So easy to make, as you guys can see, that it's literally taking about, wait, about 20 something minutes to make from beginning to end. Only reason why I kind of stretched up explaining everything, but once you make this the first time, I guarantee, I guarantee you, you're gonna be hooked on it. You're gonna wanna have this at least once or twice because it's just so simple to make. Especially if you're someone like myself who works multiple hours a day and you're like, I'm hungry, but I don't want to sit and sleep. So, one pot meal. So there you guys have it. I'm hopefully going to be coming across some other keto or low carb versions of recipes that we've done previous episodes as well to show you that although it is just as tasty as the regular version, as you guys can see, the whole egg roll thing going on um he loves the egg roll thing going on and you can adapt this to whatever you if you want to take out let's say the green onions because you don't like that that's fine you don't omit that. Anything on the um the only yourself. thing i would not omit with fail is the cabbage obviously i would not omit um the oh, i said cabbage already I would not omit the sesame oil unless you're allergic to it, then you would have to find something else, right? Um, and you can omit the eggs, okay? Other than that, everything else that we added in, you have to do it with this recipe because that's what makes the recipe and that's the flavor of it. So get yourself a tortilla, get yourself some tacos, so some egg roll wraps, you can find them anywhere, and have fun with it. Having fun while eating and learning what you're putting in your meals is and I tell people that all the time. You should know what goes in your meals because then you become more appreciative of it. So, without further ado, so we can give out to those people who have birthdays this week mm -hmm. or had had a birthday this week, um, we want to say happy birthday to you guys from lunch break to let you know that we have your birthdays here and that, you know, because you can't really celebrate the normal way, um, we still want to acknowledge the fact yep. that you guys have birthdays. So, I want to wish a, a very happy birthday to Yelemni, uh, whose birthday passed uh, to Christopher, whose birthday also passed this Sunday, um, to my aunt Felipa, whose birthday passed uh, this Monday, uh, happy birthday to Alma, whose birthday was this Tuesday, uh, happy birthday to Marilis, whose birthday was also Tuesday. <laughs> October was a busy month for some people, it's I'm just saying. Um, happy birthday to Vanessa, whose birthday was also Tuesday. Um, happy birthday to all the watchers that we have here mm -hmm. who are always watching and, and commenting. Happy birthday to you. Um, happy birthday to my cousin, Jana, whose birthday was also on that Wednesday. Happy um, birthday to Anika Gopalsen. <laughs> um, Which was it today? Yeah, happy birthday, girl. Um, and then we have some main birthdays that are coming tomorrow mm -hmm. for Jolanda, and birthday, and Sarah. Sarah Lakram, which, by the way, we all, we went to school together. Uh, Anika and Sarah and I and Chris. So, guys, happy birthday! And those who are birthdays are still coming up. Don't forget, we're forgotten about you. Uh, the next episode actually will have you guys featured in it. So, just, so just letting you know, hey Ryan, what's up? Hey. So, just so that, that's basically the gist of it. And also, we want to like to always, as we always do, to all those essential people who are doing their due diligence of being safe and keeping us safe and for ourselves also for staying safe and I want to give a big shout out and a thank you to everybody for that yeah and as always guys as we say here on, on, on lunch break always always practice safe precautions wash your hands wear your mask don't be a fool okay this thing is real I don't want to get into that debate about that 
ever. Wash your hands, keep your distance when you need to. If you're sick, stay home. A job is really not worth you dying, to be honest with you. A job is not worth getting people sick. And don't be selfish. Cover your damn mouth when you cough. So, thank you everyone for joining us on episode 100. I know we had some technical difficulties. Technical difficulties. Um, I'm going to have to plan to see if I can correct these things. Doing this and you guys watching, it makes it horrible for you guys. And it makes it as well. But thank you guys for tuning in on Twitch, on Instagram, on Facebook, and Twitter, and all the places that you guys watch us. We thank you and appreciate you. And as always, we want to, well, real quick, I just want to take this time to thank him to Semi. And I say Semi. For allowing her to do the regardless. Semi. Semi. Semi, semi so thank doing you, the show. Melissa, for holding. 100 no because we're doing a tribute you're doing a tribute to 100 so let's just keep it Doesn't as matter. 100 as we can no we're just, 100. like saying everybody thank you for watching the show don't forget to visit our social medias um like comment and share <laughs> and as you say here on the don't settle for less and make it your best so love thank you so much love you guys have a great day bye Lunch break. Hey guys, you are watching Lunch Break, the show that brings you the many foods you can make during your break at lunch. Watch us on TV Tuesdays at 12 p.m. and Thursdays at 5:30 p.m. on Spectrum 79 and 1998, on RCN Channel 83 and Verizon FiOS Channel 35. Watch us live every Friday at 4 p.m. on TV, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram and Twitch. Spectrum Channel 1997. RCN 85 and Verizon Fios Channel 37. Thanks for watching.